Welcome to this week's class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning a beautiful Chassidic discourse in the Rebbe. The name of the Chassidic discourse is called Yehuda Ato. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Shabbos, Parshas Vayechi, which in that year, it was in the 16th day of the month of Tevis, in the year Tafshin Mem Vav, 37 years ago. So again, the Chassidic discourse is based on the verse in this week's Torah portion where Yaakov Avinu is blessing his children and he blesses his child Yehuda and he says, Yehuda, ato yeducha echecha. To you, Yehuda, your, your, your brothers are going to acknowledge you. So the Rebbe brings from the Alta Rebbe that he explains in his classical works in the Parsha and Torah Er, and the same thing also in the Hasidic discourses afterwards, A, those that were printed and those that are still in, in manuscript form. And he explains over there, what's the spiritual idea of Yehuda? Yehuda comes from the word of Apam. Now, Oides Hashem, when he was born, his mother said, now I'm going to acknowledge and thank Hashem. When do you thank Hashem? So uh, thanking Hashem comes from a place, in Kabbalah, I'll say it in Hebrew, I'll translate in place of what? A bittel. When a person's the level of acceptance, that's when you were ready to thank Hashem and acknowledge Him for His all's greatness. So again, so Yehuda, what does Yehuda mean? Yehuda is represented by the bittel, acceptance. That was his real power. You know, as we all know, Yehuda was strong. What was his strength? His strength was that he had bittel, he had acceptance. Now, before they explain Yehuda on the level of acceptance, the power of Bittel, so first they explain the spiritual significance of the other tribes. Who were the tribes before Yehuda? So you have Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, who were before Yehuda. And they explain it there as follows. What is the idea, what is Ruvain represented on a spiritual level? Because So Ruvain, when he was born, his mother said, Kira Hashem, Hashem saw. In other words, what does that mean? So Ruvain comes from Ru'i at the sea. What does that mean practically on our level? When we serve God in a level of re'iyah, we see godliness. So Reuven comes when we serve God, when we see godliness. Godliness is revealed to us when we see God. In other words, and everybody explains like this. What does seeing mean? Seeing means something which is close. In other words, so basically it's serving God in a way the way God is involved in the world and you see God in the world. And like the verse says, as, and I'll say it in Hebrew, I'll translate, pick up your eyes on high and see who created this. So you're able to see in the creation of the world, God. So when a person meditates, and you meditate uh, in the greatness of God, and as it's, the expression is, Hashem, how the greatness of Hashem, how great it is, or Hashem. So, in other words, when you think about how great God is, how, is, how God created the world, maintains the world, so in Kabbalah that's called, that's the way God is memali kalalman, the way God fills the world. So when you look into the world and when you meditate, and when you think a little bit, you'll see God running the show. Now, so where does this meditation come from? It's not from an aloof meditation, which is not grounded in reality. But this meditation comes from being grounded in reality. So this is called re'ia, you see godliness. It's closeness, that you see God in the world. So when you see it, and you feel it, then you come to the level of what? Of Abbas Hashem. Love for Hashem. So the void of Ruvain is when you see God into the world, and by seeing God, you come to love a God. And like there are quotes where it says, less pulchano rachmisa. There's no great spiritual work, like this, the work of loving Hashem. And love comes from a closeness. So again, so just to recap, what he's explaining is, what is the avoida of Ruvain? The avoida of Ruvain is when you see godliness through meditation, realizing that God created and maintains the world, and that will bring you to loving Hashem. So Ruvain is seeing godliness, and, and therefore you love Hashem. Who's the next to the tribe? The next one is Shimon. What is Shimon? So when he was born, so what did his mother say? Kishama Hashem, Hashem heard. What does that mean practically on a spiritual level? It's referring to when we serve God, when we hear godliness. Hearing godliness. In other words, when do you see, like Reuben, you see. You see things that are in front of you. What do you have to hear? Things that you don't see, so you hear about it. So hearing is a, hearing about something which is not, which is not close. In other words, so what, what is it referring to? It's referring to serving God with things which are disconnected and far from the, from the physical reality of the world.
In other words, so the, the spiritual avoid is what you hear and you understand from things which are far away. And when a person meditates on things that are far away, so what is what emotion does that awake within the person? So when it's far away and you hear about it, it creates a feeling of, of yira, of awe, because when you're close to it, like Ruven, you see it and you feel it and you understand it and you can relate it to that, you love it. On the other hand, when you're just hearing things from afar, you're, that creates a, a, an expression of Yira. So again, so Shimon is coming from hearing, hearing from far, which creates the emotion of Yira Hashem. So so far we have Yehuda, which we started, which is Bittal, but then we went backtrack to start with Reuven, which is to see close in its Av Hashem. Shimon is to hear from far in its Yerush Hashem. And then we come to the level of Levi. What is Levi? Like it said, like the, like what the, his mother said when he was born, how palm you love Ishi Eli. Now my Ishi, my man, is going to cleave to me. In other words, what does Yilava mean? It's coming from the word of cleaving, which is basically connection and becoming one. What does that mean practically on a spiritual level? That's practically it means when we when do the mitzvahs that Hashem commanded us to do, there's 613 commandments, 248 positive, 365 negative, and we do the mitzvahs. So what is a mitzvah? A mitzvah comes from the word of tzav tzavachibar, creates a connection. And when you do the mitzvah, you literally become one with the, I'll say it in Hebrew, and I'll translate, with atzmusa yimohusa yizborech. When you do the mitzvah, you literally cleave and become one with, one, one with Hashem. So levi comes from the idea of cleaving. Cleaving, we, we, we cleave to Hashem by doing Hashem's mitzvahs. Now, so again, just to recap before we go for, forward. So we learned that Ruvain is, when you see godliness, it's close, from Malikalam, that creates Av as Hashem, love for Hashem. Shimon is you hear from far, and that creates you as Hashem. And Levi is when you do a mitzvah, and you, and you create a deep connection with the essence of Hashem through doing the mitzvahs. Now I was going to explain the connection, how it flows. In other words, why does Levi... The mitzvahs, the, the, the connection come only after Ruvain, which is love, and after Shimon, which is what? Which is Yira. Why does it come afterwards? And Rebbe explains like this. Because the fact is, what is the source? What is the energy that drives us to do all the 248 positive commandments, another mitzvah, another mitzvah? It's our love for Hashem. Love comes first. When you have love for Hashem, 248 mitzvahs is very, very easy. If you don't have the love, every mitzvah becomes a whole struggle. Why am I doing it? And it's so much, and it's so hard, etc. So love is the driving force for the positive commandments. Yira, on the other hand, you're in awe of Hashem. That's the source of not wanting to transgress. You don't want to be disconnected from Hashem, and that will help you not transgressing the 365 negative commandments. So in other words, again, Avad Hashem is a source for all the positive commandments, 248. Yiraz Hashem is a source for all the negative commandments, 365. Which is generally speaking, some terminology, will, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll say it in Hebrew, I'll translate it. It's generally the idea of sur ra, going away from evil, and it's not transgressing the 360 our commandments, and asay toiv and doing the mitzvahs. Which in Sur Meirah and Asi Toiv, you in, included in the Evolda Mitzvahs. The Sur Meirah is the 365 negative, and the Asi Toiv is the 248 positive. Now, how does that happen? That happens after the introduction of Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem. And then you come to the level of Yilava Ishi which is basically doing the mitzvahs, which creates the connection. So now as Rebbe is explaining beautifully, saying this, why does it flow from Ruvain Shimon to Levi? Because again, Ruvain comes first, you have to love Hashem. Shimon comes second, you're in awe of Hashem. Once you're in awe, and then you love Hashem, then you have Levi, then you do all the mitzvahs. They come, they, they, the, the mitzvahs come and creates the beautiful connection. Which basically, the, the third level of you love Ishi Eli comes after you have the Ava and the Yira first. Because once you have Ava and Yira, then you do all the mitzvahs. And that's why Gerber says it says you love a Ishi Dafka. It says you love a, he's going to cleave. And what is what is the person called? It's called Ishi. What's the idea of Ishi? So Ishi is made up of Ish Shali. Ishi, my fire. What does it mean, fire, my, my, my fire? So it's referring to the, the fire that's down here in this world and the fire which is on, on high. It becomes my fire. The, the uh, Hashem's fire and our fire get become one, which is connect, which is basically the two uh, powerful emotions of love and, love and awe for Hashem, Av and Yira. And once you have the fire 
of the love and you have the fire of the awe from on high and from down here, then you can go ahead and you have a you love a Ishi we cleave to Hashem. And like literally the way, the way, the, way the verse says, uh, and as we know the verse is referring to Yaakov Avinu. And what is it? Uh, uh, you love Yishalai, who's going to cleave to to to, um, uh, to Leah? With, referring to Yaakov. Yaakov's going to cleave to Leah. And we know Yaakov, who is Yaakov? So you know you have Avraham was Chesed, Ava. Yitzchak was Gvura, which is Hira. And Yaakov is a fusion of the two. He's also the fusion of Tiferes, which is Ava and, Av, Ava and Yira together. So after you have Ruvain, which is Ava, you have Shimon, which is Yiro. And then you have Levi, which is the, which is the fusion of the cleaving to do the mitzvahs. Then you come to the level of Yehuda. And Yehuda is Oides Hashem. Now I acknowledge Hashem. Total acceptance. In other words, what's acceptance? What's Haidoya? Bittel. Acceptance. And like it says afterwards, and we learned it already in the previous clinic discourse, the Rebbe says after, after Yehuda, what does it say about Tamay bin Ladis? She stopped giving birth. Why? Because once you have acceptance, then you're totally plugged in, and there's no there's, and there's there's no there's no birth afterwards. You totally you're totally there one with Hashem, and it's actually higher than Ava. It's higher than Yira, higher than you love Yishalai. Acceptance is the highest level. Why? And this is a powerful point. The Rebbe says because the first three of love that's that's that, that it's energy. Yira, it's also energy. Cleaving is also energy. There's something moving here. However, when it comes to Yehuda, that's total acceptance. There's no movement. You're totally one. In Abba, you're loving. There's you loving Hashem. In Yira, you're in awe of Hashem. In Mitzvah, if you're doing a Mitzvah, you're connecting. So it's still two connecting. When it comes to Yehuda, when it comes to acceptance, then there is, there is no movement. And you literally what, 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 come, come on with Hashem. So again, Bittal is the highest. But now they're asked a simple question. What did we just learn? That Bittal is the highest. It's higher than Abba, it's higher than Yira, it's higher than doing the Mitzvah, it's Bittal, the one acceptance. Obviously you need everything, but in, in terms of levels, it's the highest level. The Rebbe says, one second, the fact is, brought down in other places in Chassidus, that Bittal acceptance is not the highest level. And on the contrary, acceptance is the beginning of any interaction with God. Before you start loving God, being in awe of God, and doing the mitzvahs, acceptance comes first. We just learned that you go from love to awe, doing the mitzvahs, and then you become one with Hashem. But the fact is, it's brought down many places in Chassidus, that acceptance comes first, before you even start any process. And Rebbe explains, the truth is, that when it comes to Bittal, there's two levels. When it comes to acceptance, there's two different levels. In other words, there has to be a certain acceptance that comes in the beginning of the work, and as before you even start with love and awe and, and doing any mitzvahs, you have acceptance first. That's the first level of acceptance. But then you have the acceptance which is at the, at the end, which is completes the avoid. After you have ava, after you have yira, or love and awe, and after you cleave doing the mitzvahs, then you have total acceptance, which comes again after ava, which we said is, a, is there's no work, like the work of ava, and you have the full, you have the full level of ava. And you have the full level of Yira, the full level of love, and the full level of awe. And you have the full level of doing the mitzvahs. Then you have the highest level of acceptance. So then you have the complete avoida of Yehuda, of Ata Yudu HaChecha, your brothers are going to are going to acknowledge you. In other words, and only afterwards, the higher level, then it's your possible to be, Yod Chabayur your hand will be in your enemy's neck, etc. And it's like brought down in many places in Chassidus. In other words, so what they're saying is, there's two levels of acceptance. There's a level of acceptance, which is a lower level, which starts at the beginning. Then you do to the full level of loving Hashem, the full loving being of Hashem. And then you go to the next level where you're doing the mitzvahs. And then you come to the highest level where it's total acceptance. Now, it's powerful stuff. So the Rebbe says, from here, you have to learn a lesson in practicality, in the way we serve Hashem. In other words, because even though... You're going to ask a question when you have to learn a practicality. The fact is, we know that there's a major difference between the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes. In other words, because the fact is, every one of us, we all come from the patriarchs. And the patriarchs we received as an inheritance, the avoid of, of, of Avram, which is love, and the avoid of Yitzchak, which is Yira, and the avoid of Yaakov, which is the Ferris, which is compassion. So we all connect to every one of the others. We all have it. However, the fact is, not everyone comes from, from all the tribes. Some come from Ruben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, etc. So, 
So the fact is, what are we saying? We have to learn a lesson from Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. We're not necessarily connected to each one of the tribes. We're, we're connected to all the patriarchs, not necessarily all the tribes. But Rebbe explains, no, no, that's not that, what, what, the, 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 the theory that we come from a specific tribe and therefore we only have that avoida is not necessarily collect. And what does that mean? It means like this. Every one of us is connected to a specific tribe in a strong way. So in other words, our main avoida is pending on which tribe we're coming from. In other words, but so but but when it comes to the avoids, that is definitely our main avoida. In other words, the main spiritual service that we have of Avram applies to every one of us. The spiritual service of Yitzchak and to Yaakov, love, awe, and being and and and, and compassion applies to every one of us. However, when it comes to the Shvat and the tribes, not everyone is our main avoid. That's not our main our spiritual service. But nevertheless, even though it's not our main, but it, we do have a connection to each one, each one, each one of the other, of the of the Shvatim, Reuven, Shimon, Le- Levi, etc. So it's therefore, so since we, it's not our main avoid, but we still have a connection. We have to know what is the lesson we're learning from Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. And like it's brought down in the parasha, the Rebbe says, it says clearly, when Yaakov blessed him, it says, Ish asher kir In other words, each one according to their unique blessing, every tribe got its unique blessing. But then it says, Beirach Aisam, he blessed them all together. And Rashi says, you might think that maybe everyone got their unique blessing and they weren't shared. So Rashi says, no, no, no. Beirach Aisam teaches us that they all share, it's a shared blessing. Even though everyone has that unique blessing, but it's still a shared blessing. In other words, every single one of the tribes, besides the fact that he received his unique, powerful blessing, he also received the blessings from the other tribe. So since every tribe received from all the tribes, so therefore, obviously, we have to learn a lesson from every one of the tribes, how it applies to us. And especially that all the tribes are the children of Yaakov Avinu, and they receive Yaakov's blessings. And as we know, every one of the Jewish people are connected to Yaakov. And like the author says in Egeris HaKodesh and Tanya, that um, the soul of Yaakov was a general soul, and all the souls of the Jewish people are within Yaakov. So A, even though it's not, it's the Dervis saying, is even though it's, every tribe is different, but we all, all the tribes share the blessing. B, all the tribes receive the blessing from Yaakov, and we're all connected to Yaakov Ivino. And that's why Rebbe says, it's in, that's why also it's hinted in, the fact is that Yaakov had another name. What's the second name of Yaakov? Yisrael. He was called Yisrael. And what are the Jewish people called? Israelites. So everybody's connected to Yaakov. Everyone's connected to is Israelites. Because Yaakov's name is Yisrael. And especially the way it's known, it says that why is Yis- Yaakov called Yisrael? Because Yisrael stands for, has five letters. Yud. A sin, Reish, Aleph, Lamed, which stands for Yesh, Shishim, Riboy, Oisius, Latayro. This um, uh, 600,000 letters in the Torah. In other words, that in Yaakov's name, every single Jewish person throughout history is, is connected to. So therefore, since we're all connected to, to, to Yaakov Avinu, we're connected to Israel, so after we have to learn the lesson from it. So the Rebbe says, what's the lesson? We do our work, and we do it in a complete way, which again, we go from Ruvain, we love Hashem. Shimon, we're in awe of, we're in awe of Hashem. And Levi, we cleat Hashem doing mitzvahs. Then we come to the highest level um, of Yehuda, which is a bit all acceptance. And now, Oides Hashem, I acknowledge Hashem, total acceptance. Then we do our Oida, we'll, we'll, we'll get the, all, the, all the other blessings of Yaakov Vinu. Uh, like he blessed Yehuda and he says, Ad ki yavoy shiloi, till he comes to shiloi, velu yikasamim. And what is shiloi referring to? Shiloi is referring to the King Messiah, like Rashi says, the King Messiah, that, that he is the king over everything. And, and, and the Medrash actually says, Shiloh comes from two words, Shiloh, like it says, Yovilu, they're going to bring the gift to the Master. And the same thing also, velu yikasamim, because what's going to happen is in the times of Mashiach, What's going to happen in the times of Mashiach is God's going to be revealed all over, not only in synagogues uh, and houses, all over the world God's going to be revealed. Even the nations of the world are going to realize that God is running the show. And like the Rambam says, when Mashiach comes, the whole world will be tr- transformed and elevated up to the point that the whole world is going to serve Hashem. 
And like the prophet says, Ki oz amim the whole the nations of the world are going to have one clear the language and we're going to pray to one God. And I was like, it says, we're all going to call B'Shem Hashem in the name of God. We're all going to pray to Hashem. And like the, another verse in the prophet says, when, God, when God's going to be revealed, the whole world is going to accept God as the king. And up to the point where it's going to be an elevation in, the, in, 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 in not only in the world, but also by the Jewish people. And what's going to happen is we're going to have Moshe is going to be back with us. Aaron's going to be back with us. And it's like it's brought down in many places, in, in, in many places that Mashiach is going to learn Torah also at Moshe Rabbeinu and also the, the, the patriarchs and how much more so the, the tribes, etc. Why? Because it says that with the revelation that's going to happen when Mashiach comes, is going to be much higher than the, when the times of the patriarchs. So since the revelation is going to be much higher, he's going to have to teach Torah to the Avais. And how is that going to happen? So we know when we do our actions and our work, like the author says clearly in Tanya, and we basically love Hashem and awe of Hashem and do the mitzvahs, and again, most important, like we learned in this, the power of bittel, the power of acceptance, and we do it in this, these times of Golos, and what's going to happen is we're all going to merit for the revelation of Mashiach, never finish off with a blessing, it should all happen. Bimheira biamenu mamash, literally, quickly in our days, and literally by Galuladan in the time that we are living right now. So here you have a short but a very powerful civic discourse of the Rebbe about the power of acceptance love, awe, and doing the midst of the power of acceptance, and we do our avoid of the power of acceptance we're all going to merit for the revelation of Mashiach and God willing, our next class will be in Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh. Have a great and blessed week. Shavua Tov.